hear me? Okay, perfect. So we went through this. This is our subject matter of today. It's getting a way better understanding from uh, the prophet's point of view of the American flag, right? From an idea. All right, as I said before, some more American Scholar, Volume 1, 5th edition publication by yours truly, Islamism. All right, I'm going to get to the video here and look at why the prophet made things right side up in this upside down world. One of the things that he said here that I just said, I don't know if you heard it though, Morris Guy, in the Morris Guy newspaper that the prophet of Ali was the editor in chief and established and founded. 1928 AD, Prophet Abu Ali, which is the way we publish our information from our nation state or from our particular government to the world. He says the truth will never be told about a disadvantaged minority, by the general press of any country, whether that minority be racial, political, or religious. Unless we express ourselves through papers of our own, the truth about us will not be told. Okay. So that was Prophet Noble Juwali informing us, Noble Juwali, excuse me, informing us that we need to really understand our history and begin to tell our own story. Because today, as you've noticed, we see everybody on YouTube speaking about our history. And we're somewhat satisfied to allow others to talk to us about the very thing we once lived, because, you know, we keep coming back. But these are stories about our people. But why are we so complacent to allow others foreigners who have no blood relationship no vibration to tell our story and then we get fooled along the way and then we quote their stuff and we hold it up and act like oh listen to what we just did well not today so i prepared a little something for you let's look this is you know a little hopefully you can hear it too i don't know if you'll be able to hear it right now it's kind of low we can hear it, Grand Gov. Okay. Oh, it's just the opening. So, it's a little something to preview. It's called the trailer, which you're about to experience right now. All right. So, we're going to look at the history of the American flag, which is buried in the esoteric understanding of America. And this is very important because our flag has been flying here for over 10,000 years. All right. Who better, who better but Professor Drew to tell us this particular story? A lot of people miss the science and understanding of Professor Drew. Then the Egyptian adept student at that time. So we're going to look at this in all of its glory and peel back the layers so that we can see, or truly see who was the first one to bring us not only this particular information and give honors to whom honors are due, which would be Professor Drew. Right, all this information about what you see today, people knowing all this stuff. All right. And then who better to give us this than a not only a professor, which he was a professor in herbology, but then became what is known as he says here, the Egyptian adept student. OK. So it's extremely important for us to honor that. Right. But you may be asking, what is Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept student, have to do with the American flag other than giving honors to that flag? Well, as I'm reading here, in 1912 AD, Prophet Drew Ali, the Egyptian Adept student at that time, retrieved our Moorish American flag. All right, he did that. All right, and that's a whole story within itself. And we'll get into that maybe at the time. But, and brought back glory, excuse me, brought glory back. 
<laughs> to the American flag as adept of Egypt. Now he graduated, right, from a student. He graduated in the year 1916 AD to an Egyptian ascended master. Most didn't know that. And founded the Morris Divine and National Movement in the same year, May 1st, 1916. He announced his holy prophethood in 1925. But let's start first with the Professor Drew and the Egyptian adept student, right, and take this journey real quick. Right, so that we could get a really good understanding. So we were just speaking about him being in 1912, an Egyptian adept student, our professor Drew, Egyptian ascended master in 1916, right? And it's very important, right? That we really understand his journey so that we can understand and, and don't roll with the spookism, oh, a pop, it just pops out of nowhere. A prophet just a pop out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, right. But Prophet Drew Ali are the prophet of Allah in 1925. All right. So it's really important that we see this so that we can understand this particular lesson that I'm about to give today. All right. And to give particular honors to whom honor is due. All right. So praise Allah for the Egyptian Adept student and the ascended master and prophet of Allah. Let's take a look at this. All right. In that Right, he brought us three things that he says that can save ourselves, the three steps to salvation. And we are living witnesses today that these things are absolutely a fact. Not only is the salvation a fact, which we are the fruition thereof, those who hold the pass card and have done what the prophet number Jewali has asked them to do according to the laws in which we are given here at Temple number 43 for everyone, right? But these are the very ones that he said that you should take and save yourself, right? So these three steps to salvation, the Holy Quran of the Morris Science Temple of America, right, divinely prepared by the noble prophet with the logo circle seven there, as you can see, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Drew Ali, right? By the guiding of his father, God Allah, the great God of the universe to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father, God Allah. This particular book for us, you know, we affectionately call it, you know, the Circle Seven. Okay. But we know when we read it and digest it fully, right, it is our family book. It is a book of our family. It has our laws in there. It has the way we do our marriage. It has our historical understanding about one of the greatest, one of our greatest brothers to walk on the planet, known as Jesus in that particular you know, language, and also we understand that Jesus means justice, but it has the history of it that was held back for, for this specific time that we're living in so that we can get something. And what that is actually is a personality. Why? Because we're living a false personality known as a Negro or coming up out of it. Therefore, something had to replace that. What better thing than the greatest, one of your greatest brothers and sisters that walk the planet. So you have you know, Elizabeth, Mary, a host of women, right, within there, right? Uh, a few other ones, Shalom, that was a sister. All right, so what, anyway, the, um, and with these particular personalities, we get these lessons back so that we could fill the void that we are uh, shaking off, which is the Negro psychology, right, that we've gotten from a European psychology are the mental sickness known as mental slavery. So that's what that Holy Quran actually does for us. It has our laws in there, the laws of justice, which tell us how to, you know, form our laws and districts within, you know, and how to live under, right? Then we also have the Quran questionnaire for Moorish Americans. Just the picture alone speaks a million words, right? Where one like us, who was sent according to the great Quran of Muhammad, Shura 14.4, came like us, speaking like us, but was ordained by the great God Allah to deliver us out of the cares of the world. He showed this with his, with his foot on the solid rock of salvation or understanding, right? And this particular picture, or this particular picture is the first time drawn like this, right? But it, it actually follows what this time we're living in, a lot of people know it as revelations. All right, so in there also, we, on the back of there is the authority. So let us know where we're at, right? And in, in fine print, you'll find that this whole thing is about 
you know, has the authority of a nation state where we are able to, you know, give the sacred obligation of American citizenship for those who have already cleared themselves or corrected them status and ranked up uh, according to the way the Prophet Nabi Ali has said it and according to their, uh, to their words, deeds, and their actions. Right, and then within that nation state or within there, right, with our genealogy being the Quran questionnaire, we have our law, which is known as the constitution or a social compact, giving us the very law that we can all live under and agree so that we could live here in peace. You know what I'm saying? Something that we can all agree to that says, yes, we will live by those standards and be held by those standards so that we can move forward in a better reality. Just in a nutshell, what the constitution is for a more humane. All right. So these three steps to salvation, the Prophet Nabi Juali has seriously has done marvelous works, what would be considered miracles, in a time where you were wiped out of history. So give an honor to the Prophet for that. Hold on, I think I went a little too far. Oh, no, I didn't. All right. So let's go and look at this really quick. All right. It says to unfold the American flag, keeping on our subject matter here is to understand its history and value. How long has the American flag been in existence? Where did it have its beginnings? You know, the prophet explained this to us in the esoteric understanding in him being an Egyptian adept. And in the phrase related to the American flag, old glory. They called the American flag old glory for a reason, right? But let some tell it, Oh, Bessie Ross, right, established our modern flag. They say, oh, Bessie was out there when the Confederates was everywhere. She was just picking up pieces of the flag. And when they shot a cannonball, oh, Bessie ducked the ball and kept picking up pieces. And she just kept picking it up, took them home, and she sat by a warm hearth and began to sew. And she sold all night long, they said, Betsy did, to her fingers, God blessed it. And in the morning, she had the old glory ready to give the Northern Army. You know, we hear this story about old Bessie, right, and how the American flag is unfolding. It really doesn't tell us anything, right? We got to remember what time we're living in. We're living in the Great Deception. So anyway, right? If old Bessie Ross or whoever they said created the flag, it makes it no older than 200 years old. So how's that old? I mean, 200? I mean, we know some, know some people that lived to 106. My grandmother herself lived to like 99, 96, somewhere around there. One of my aunties, 104. I mean, that doesn't really say old, right? And what's so glorious then if old Betsy did it? War? You establish it through war, huh? That's glorious. Uh, anyway, so it has to be a little something deeper meaning to that as we're reading here. Well, in understanding the flag of America is to understand America and its divine history. Let's turn to our divine teacher, Prophet Noble Juali, and understand how he revealed all glory through the divine instructions and his living example as an Egyptian ascended master. Please open up your Quran questionnaire for more, I mean, excuse me, your holy Quran of the more scientific of America. Please turn to the uh, chapter 47, XLV11, RII. And we'll be dealing with verse number three here. I highlighted these particular parts because we're going to be paraphrasing certain things to get an understanding about America. Remember, we're dealing with the flag to get a true understanding about the flag, to get an understanding about the history. All right, the prophet explains this to us, but it was just somewhat hidden. But if you are patient enough, and hopefully I'm fast enough, we'll get to the end of this. All right, so his, uh, we're going to start at verse three. And now we're speaking about the first inhabitants of what is known as Africa, or that word Africa, that describes particular land masses. All right, today, right, which we're going to unfold, like we said before, it means America, right? But first inhabitants of Africa came from the land of Canaan. Now his father, Ham, were the second ones, the second Inhabitants means the first inhabitants, second inhabitants. Mean the first people to populate a certain particular area. Before then, there was really, there was nobody. You gotta get this understanding. So Ham, right? And since we're speaking about America here, we're gonna have to look at Ham, right? 
because it says something here. Ham's father, right, was second, right? And then came this word uh, Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominions of Mexico, right? The first and true and divine name of Africa. Now, if you go watch the video I put together for everybody called the North Gate, you understand that demarcation line is still in existence today. That demarcation line, see the Prophet Abu Ali's language is very, it's like a euphony of information. It's a, like a symphony, but it's his, like a historical symphony. And there's many, many different um, musical instruments in a symphony. And oh, each one has a story to tell. Please put your mics on mute. Yes. All right. Just please put your mics on mute. It's All right. Can you still hear me? Are you coming in clear? All right. So please put the mics on mute. I put her in the uh, waiting room, get the question, then come back. Please put the question in the chat. All right, so if you guys can still hear me, I'll move on. All right, so we're going to look, we're going to look at America here, and the reason we're looking at our divine instructions because it's all here. So Ham, right, being the second inhabitant of what is known as Africa, we know today as America, and how we can prove that is in line four. I mean, verse four, the dominion of, and we're speaking about him, right, of Africa, and, right, is Northwest and Southwest, as it says here, was his father's dominion of Africa. So right now, Ham being the second inhabitant of Africa at that time, that name, but the Northwest and Southwest geographical topography lets us know, right, that that land mass of the Northwest and Southwest with the prophet, Noble Drali being a genius, put it that way because he knows names can change, showing you that here too, is America. At the time, it was known as Africa. He's utilizing that particular term to describe the land mass of America in the language that it was used, uh, let's just say in the previous reset. So Northwest and Southwest is our key here to understand that that's what we talk about as America. All right, so Ham then, right, is the second inhabitant of the Northwest. Excuse me, the first inhabitant of the Northwest, right? Really, because Cush and his family were the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Cain. Now their dominion though, right, was Southeast and, um, you know, uh, that particular part of Africa. Now the Northwest and the Southwest was Ham's which we now, that's America. Let's go look at what is the Northwest continent, right, and Southwest, right? So let's move on. The Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest. All right, so we over there in Ham's land. Okay, why? Because we asked for some permission, you know, and, and things like that, why, you know, because we were, all from Canaan, as it says here. We all of the family, royalty. From where? Canaan. All right, very important. Now, number eight. Oh, number seven. Now, those particular Moabites' dominion and habitation extended, uh, as it says in number seven, which I'm just going to paraphrase here for time's sake, right? Northeast, all the way to the southwest Africa, across the great Atlantis. Means even Atlantis was your land, was your area. Across all that, meaning, you know, you, you extended all that, even unto the present North, South, and Central Americas, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands. Now, Prophet Noble Jualit's language is very important. And like I said before, he speaks in this beautiful euphony of majestic historical, you know, um, double entendres almost, right? But so, and it's very subtle how he puts the thing because he has to stretch your history, which is extremely vast over, uh, you know, a few 20 verses or so. So if you are rushing certain things, you'll miss it. So number eight is one of those things that people miss. Now I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna go ahead and prove it to you later. So the river Nile was drudged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with the surrounding kingdoms, period sentence and, and, uh, and grammar, the prophet knew. All right, now that particular, the river Nile that was drudged by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt 
in order to trade with the kingdoms, that's the Mississippi. Also, change, also, you gotta look this up in grammar. Also, the Niger River was, we, now we're speaking about a whole different thing here, but still a, a, a connection into its understanding. Also, the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaohs of Egypt in, in those ancient days of trade, in, in the ancient days of trade, right? And it extended eastward from the River Nile. Now, that's the one everybody knows today. Westward, look how it's moving, across the Great Atlantic. It was used for trade and transportation. Went across the Great Atlantic and then ended up to the other river, Nile, the original one, up through the Mississippi for tra trade and transportation. All right, I'm gonna prove that a little later on too. All right, so what your ancient forefathers were you were today without dark contradiction, let's move on. So American history, the Northwest and Southwest starts with Ham, as we are really gathering. Most people want you to disbelieve that, right? Once, once pe people wrote your history and told you Ham was somewhere in Africa and you got a whole bunch of so-called black scholars out of Africa and in, uh, in America, you know, a uh, bunch of, them, oh yeah, we agree, you're Nubia, <laughs> you know, and all this stuff. Huh? Prophet Noble Juali says Ham came to America and was the second inhabitant and being the first inhabitant of the Northwest where he uh, chilled at, you know what I'm saying? Now, what more do we know about Ham? According to the divine history of an Egyptian adept, Noble Drew Ali, right? The Northwest, Southwest starts with Ham. But like I said, according to the Egyptian adept, Noble Drew Ali, the Egyptians who were the Hamatites. Hmm. So Ham, Smashed, smashed here. Why did he smash here? You can go look at another video because of the flood. Obviously, why they had to leave Canaan because of the flood. Now we got to deal with Ham, and all you got to do is go back to his pops, his Noah. All right, and start piecing things together. All right. So the Egyptians who were the Hamatites, hmm. Okay. All right. Where do we get that? Oh, the Holy Quran, the Moral Sign Temple of America, chapter number forty. Uh, excuse me, chapter forty-five, verse three. Therefore, America was Egypt. Through what we've just read from the prophet Noble Drew Ali, who happens to be an Egyptian adept, can we stand on the fact then that America was Egypt? Hmm. Islam. 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 Let's further, let's go investigate this because you know, certain people don't, you know, they want to act like they, they came up with that or, or found that understanding today. When the Prophet Noble Jawali already put that to us in 1927 and before, in 1912, as it says when you read the article, um, Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept student, that he had, he was also teaching the missing years of Jesus. So he's already doing this in 1912. All right. So, but for the sake of scholarly work, we will utilize these as reference guides to our subject matter, which is the American flag, old glory. All right. The first one here is the Archives of Aboriginal Knowledge. All right. And uh, let's see when that was done. In 1793 to 1864, the Archives of Aboriginal Knowledge by uh, Henry R. Schoolcraft. The original papers laid before Congress. Very important paper. We're going to get into it in a minute. Excuse me, a uh, book. We were also going to be looking at the Aborigines of Canada by William Clint around that time. I think it's 18, 18, um, 32, 34, somewhere around there. And also the history of the Indian tribes of North America. And uh, let me put my glasses back on here by Thomas L. M. Kinsey. All right, and we're gonna be doing this for the sake of 
scholarly work and also to you know look at our subject matter here a little bit more detail. So the very first one I want us to pay attention to, if you ever happen to get a chance to look at this book and read it, which is absolutely bomb, right? Which I did on an investigation in, in 2019, writing a 50,000 year here report that I turned into the Department of, um, um, what was that? The, uh, the Department of, first it was the Department of Indian Affairs or something like that, Department of State, ended up picking it up. Department and, of Interior. Uh, no, we. I remember I wrote in 2019, and we were. I had to send all that stuff in because we were investigating the whole Indian thing, and the federal government is like, "Oh, y'all too big for us to handle." And they even told us that the, the term "Indian" is a is a, a term, a made up term. It's a word of art. And then they sent us to the Department of Interior, and the Buffalo Seal that they hit us back on that paper. Anyway, I have it, and I'll let you guys see it one day. But anyway, it's very important this book though. Because what we found out, this is the actual book that they utilize, right, to say who's who in America claiming to be uh, indigenous or aboriginal here. Why? Because this is the one that's archives of, the archives of aboriginal knowledge containing all the original papers laid before Congress. Thus, Congress agreed upon this is the one that will, anyone coming along and saying anything, this is the, the one that finalizes who, you know, who, the, who it is here in the Americas, all right? So if you understand that, why? Because there has to be a standard. Then if it's not, then anyone can come and claim anything, even from foreigners from some different countries can say anything. And without a real standard, then how then can the original people then come and get what is rightfully theirs? So this is that one, in other words. So this is that uh, archives of, of Aboriginal knowledge containing all of the original papers laid before Congress, history, antiquities, language, ethnology, pictograph, rights, superstitions, and mythology of the Indian tribes of the United States, of the United States, uh, Henry R. Schoolcraft, L.O.D. All right. And so we'll be reading here on to your left side from page uh, 476 of 642 page book. And it's really good. And as you can see, it's the same book because you can read at the top there. All right, uh-oh, sorry about that. But this is the one that we'll be reading from. All right. So it says here, uh, in view, page number 476, in view of the best light and information which I have been able to collect on the subject, my opinion is that the earliest inhabitants of America were the descendants of Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Period, semicolon. It goes on to say a whole bunch more. But that, that right there says it all. Because that's where they open up and start, like who were the first here? And that is the very thing they open up with. Then they get into all of the other particular people who came after that. And where could we go find this at, everyone? Anybody? Okay, anybody? Anybody? Yeah, chapter 48. Praise Allah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So chapter 40, uh, yeah, 48, 47, where the Prophet Noble Jawali tells us in the in our Holy Quran, the more scientific of America, and the verses I just read. All right, we can read a little bit more. And it says, and that the first settlement was made shortly after the confusion of the tongue, at the building of the Tower of Babel. It goes on to explain about a little bit more. We'll, we'll read it too, right, in another part though. Right. But this right that's off the chain so they buried this in the archives of congress but i happened to find it right and i utilized this to prove certain particular things and the department of interior actually asked to keep our stuff and keep it as a record i stopped moving forward with them because you know we, there was an agreement there they you know both saw that well we don't really need you it's already done for us we probably already did it we got charters it's already written in our quran it's already there <laughs> so but anyway it's moving on. All right. Oh, excuse me. Hold on real quick. All right. Make sure I'm going to the right one. All right. So what would be the trade occupation of the children of Noah? So what was Ham's trade occupation if we were just to use uh, reason, common sense, and logic? 
Anybody? Islam, uh, carpenters or builders? Uh, yeah. Okay. Any, anybody else? Carpenter? Okay. Mason. Uh, okay. Masonry, carpentry. Okay. Same kind of trade. Merchants and um, commerce. Okay. Yep. E -commerce. E -commerce. Let's look at one of the biggest trades that they were. The farmers? So we, Islam, farmers too. Islam. Okay. It's not good, good answers. All of them are really good answers. Let's look at the number one thing that they were doing. Well, I would finish say construction. Construction is very good too, sister. It's long. That's really good. It's right. All right. So let's look at it. So as we can see and read from the historical record of Congress with verifying the divine historical narrative of the Holy Prophet Noble Juwali and divine instructions. Right. And, and this comes from the exact same book. You know, what other historical records can validate the facts that of Egypt being America as we get closer to old glory, right? And so this comes from the sec the next page, I think it was 474, uh, four, what was it, two, what was, it, what was that reading from me prior? Was it four or 247, so this is 240, no, 246, so this is 247. All right, so it says here where I got the highlighted part says, and underlined, I see no difficulty on this ground. The ark had recently been built, which outlived a storm for 40 days. In view of such a pattern, there was certainly mechanical genius enough to construct a ship, right? To construct a ship that would be able to contend with the waves of the summer sea for a few months. The Hamatites were ship bearing people. Okay. So I'll ask you again. What was the trade occupation of Noah? Builder. Shit, um, ships, ship selling. Um, uh, ship builder. Travel. They were what? That's right. That's more. 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 They were ship builders. Ship Why? Because Pops just built the ark. They're helping his sons. Who was one of his sons? Ham. He did have two sons. You understand? So you think that they that at that time you're the apprentice of what your father was. And if Noah, who was the greatest ship builder in the entire nation at that time, building unbelievable stuff, that's why his family was pretty much chosen royalty. So we don't think about that part. He was the merchant. He had the one that he, his family was the one building ships. What do you think Ham and them then? Thought Ham and them was just broke. So that's the television problem. We thought Noah was just some old broke old dude in some rags getting a bunch of animals. Man, these dudes was garbed up, had the best plushed out yachts for they hook up. At what time am I going to roll out of here on some bummy stuff? When I am the ship merchant on the entire planet at this time. Enough so that the God comes to me and tells me to build a boat. Think you're going to go to what? Somebody that can't build? Mm -mm -mm. He was the God of the, he was the God of the earth at the time. Or means the jet. God means ruler of the earth. Well, however people want to describe our ancestor at that time. Because they do a whole bunch of describing. It's time that we just start describing who he is and what it's about. We have the, our father, God of Lost, God of Love. All right, so the ancient artifacts of the first inhabitants of the Americas. Hematite's Afro Pit Collection. I present to you the number one collection in all the world. Let this be in your collection, right? Re enter your forefathers' divine ways. Pick up your Hematite Afro Picks, for these are some of the most ancient artifacts found in the Americas of the, of the first inhabitant people. I'm gonna prove this to you, right? But look at that. It says the Hamatites are the first inhabitants of the Americas. The following picture is from the same book, right? The next page, right? Which would be, uh, was it 248? and is described as some of the most ancient artifacts found in the Americas of the first inhabitants 
of the Americas. Now tell me, who uses such a comb to, to comb their hair, y'all? Huh? Hmm? The Moors. Native people. Native people. The Moors. How many of y'all had an Afro pick? I grew up I with grew, it. I, still got I, one. It. I grew I up with it, Grand God. I, 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 I just bought my daughter one day. I can imagine. Right. How long have we been here, people? This, man? I grew up How with it. Grand God. Have, see, I can stop right there and prove my entire point. Literally, with the comb alone, hid, hidden in their archives. They know who came here first. People with nappy hair that can pluck nine ether and start forest fires by combing their hair if they wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Praise Allah, but you know what? So the more well, Asiatic people, that's who, that's who uses them type of combs. We all did. Grew up with cake cutters, grew up with straight up, uh, little kid had big old gigantic Afro. You know what I'm saying? Love my Afro pet. But here's another interesting fact about this particular hieroglyphic or this picture. Due to the fact that we know the hematites are who? Who are the hematites? According to, the chapter, 45, the, according to chapter 45 of the More Scientific of America, I do believe around verse three. Who are the hematites? Ancient Egyptians. Ancient Egyptians. That's right. So let's look at this. So this particular what we perceive as a rope over here, which you perceive right, that name is known as the Sheen, okay? To prove that that's a hematite in ancient Egyptian being these artifacts, which most scholars look over is what I'm about to tell you right now. So what that loop is or that rope, that's known as a Sheen. A Sheen is a sign, a ring of rope symbolizing all that the sun encircles an amulet knots and ropes provide protection that is what that is okay and to further prove this that comes from the hieroglyphics hieroglyphics frequently used for royal identification you can go look this up on google hieroglyphics frequently used for royal identification which I just did, and I just showed you, a shim, which is a rope for use for protection, is a royal identification. Just told you that Ham, Noah, these were of royalty. Here's a little bit more, all right? The, uh, here's another one looking at this cup here. The Lord of the Two Lands, another royal title, is represented by the Neb glyph, meaning Lord, and by the two lines representing the two lands. So the cup, which that is a sign of, means Lord. Are y'all seeing it? <laughs> Most people look that over. First time being first time being shown you this Islam. Islamism, so we can you know really get a good understanding that the glyphs that we're seeing here and the conclusion that uh, these scholars made back in the 1700s and early uh, uh, 1800s was right on target because the Hamatites, being the first inhabitants, are the Egyptians. They had these sacred items coming from Canaan, the sacred Canaan gods are the exact gods of Egypt. 